Members of Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda's cabinet have conditionally approved a new energy policy to cut reliance on nuclear power. But they stopped short of committing to a nuclear-free Japan by the 2030s. The cabinet on Wednesday debated the proposal compiled by energy-related officials last week. They agreed the government should consult host municipalities and the international community before phasing out nuclear power. But they did not officially endorse the 20-page document. Major players in Japan's business sector oppose eliminating nuclear power. Economic factors are also prompting concern from energy officials in the United States. The U.S. has a civilian nuclear pact with Japan. Prime Minister Noda says the government should come up with a strategy that shows stable direction but also remains flexible. Some observers express doubt that Japan will achieve a nuclear phase-out by the 2030s. Cabinet members have indicated they want to remain open toward future changes in circumstances. Japanese politicians promised to rework the country's energy policy following last year's accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda announced details of that policy uh, last week. He said his government would steer the country toward a nuclear-free future, but a final decision by his cabinet has turned a clear commitment into more of a vague idea. NHK World's Susumu Kojima explains. Members of Prime Minister Noda's cabinet are playing defense. Critics say... They backed away from a plan to wean Japan off nuclear power in coming decades. But ministers stress their new energy policy hasn't changed. The new policy sets a clear direction while keeping a degree of flexibility to account for changing circumstances. The government remains faithful to the proposal worked out last week. That proposal said Japan would stop building new nuclear power plants and take other measures in order to phase out atomic energy by the 2030s. However, the cabinet wouldn't sign off on the idea. Instead, ministers say they will be taking the document into consideration as they call for continued efforts to reduce Japan's dependency on nuclear energy. Industry groups had been criticizing the nuclear phase-out plan as problematic. They've been pressuring the government to back away from the idea. Don't interrupt my act! Maintaining a stable energy supply will be difficult, and utility bills will shoot up. Companies may be forced out of Japan, and national strength will decline. When you pay off the first base for every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. The government's failure to adopt a decisive energy policy has angered people who have been calling for a nuclear-free society. They say they'll aim for zero nuclear dependency, but now we cannot help but suspect that's a token gesture. Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda says the government needs to retain flexibility while aiming to phase out nuclear power. But Wednesday's decision only paints a more uncertain picture of the future of Japan's energy policy. Yes, now, on the St. Louis team, we have uh, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. I want you to tell me the names of the fellows on the St. Louis I'm, team. I'm telling you, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Do you know the fellows' names? Yes. Well, then who's playing first? Yes. I mean the fellow's name on first base. Who? The fellow playing first base for St. Louis. Who? The guy on first base. Who is on first? Prime Minister Noda has appointed Shunichi Tanaka as chairman of Japan's new Nuclear Regulation Authority. The authority replaces the defunct Nuclear Safety Agency, which dealt with the Fukushima Daiichi accident. The new authority was in many ways born out of the Fukushima incident. I would like to improve nuclear regulatory governance from now on. Tanaka was deputy head of the Atomic Energy Commission. Noda has also appointed the four other members of the authority, including a nuclear reactor expert and a seismologist. Japanese nuclear crisis minister Goshi Hosono says he believes the authority will do its best. It's another bullshit experiment. 
The safe regulation of nuclear power has been shattered to pieces, but I believe the authority will carry out its mission to rebuild trust and safety. Hosono also stressed that transparency with the public is needed. Policymakers at the Bank of Japan are taking further action to try to give the economy a jolt. They've approved additional steps toward monetary easing. They'll be buying up more bonds and other assets. Board members reached the agreement during two days of talks. They decided unanimously to expand their asset buying program by about $127 billion to more than a trillion dollars. And board members decided to extend the term of purchase for government bonds and other assets by six months to December next year. They flagged a high degree of economic uncertainty abroad. They're concerned about European debt, a slowdown in the Chinese economy, and the bumpy U.S. recovery. BOJ board members downgraded their assessment of the Japanese economy. They say weaker domestic production and exports have put a pause on the pickup in activity. At a news conference that followed the meeting, Bank of Japan Governor Masaaki Shirakawa stated that immediate action was needed to keep the economy going. We judged today that further monetary easing was necessary now. That is to ensure the Japanese economy does not derail from a sustainable growth track with price stability. I'm leaving the link to a great article in the Huffington Post dated September 15th.
2012. The title of the article is Flood Threat to Nuclear Plants Covered Up by Regulators. NRC whistleblower claims in a letter submitted Friday afternoon to internal investigators at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. A whistleblower engineer within the agency accused regulators of deliberately covering up information relating to the vulnerability of U.S nuclear power facilities that sit downstream from large dams and reservoirs. The letter also accuses the agency of failing to act to correct these vulnerabilities despite being aware of the risks for years. You can read the full article by clicking the link in the description box below. We've reached the maximum allotment of high-quality digital content and up-to-the-minute information the human brain can adequately process.